Uh, today I'm going to be talking about strain transformations and strain gauge rosettes. So let's start about talking uh, about strain transformations. So uh, stress transformations and strain transformations are basically the same. Actually stress and strain share a lot of the same characteristics. So when we're talking about a stress matrix, we've got our stress matrix, sigma x, sigma xy, sigma xz, sigma y, sigma z, sigma yz. Um, and then we've got the mirror, uh, sigma xy, sigma xz, sigma yz. Uh, so when we're talking about stress, we have our stress matrix. When we're talking about strain, we have our strain matrix, which is epsilon x, epsilon xy, epsilon xz, epsilon y. So, uh, as we've talked about, yeah, I'm sure uh, one of the other students has talked about stress transformations. When we're talking about a 3D case and we're, we're looking at a new, our stress transformation, we have that our new stress is equal to beta times our original stress matrix times beta transpose. Well, so the same for strain. When we're looking at our, our stress, our, our stress, strain transformation, our, our new strain equals beta times our old strain matrix times beta transpose. It's the exact same as our stress, it's just now with strain. Um, some other things I wanted to touch on. For stress we have our principal stress. And for strain we have principal strain. So for a, uh, a 2D case, if we were to take our uh, stress matrix and we were writing into a 2D uh, matrix, stress would equal sigma x, and then sigma xy would be the same as uh, tau xy, and then tau xy here, sigma y. And our strain would be strain of x. And then here's here's the one of the big differences. Instead of it just being uh, some symbol xy, it's gamma xy divided by 2. I actually want to talk about that real quick. Um, our, our strain, say for strain for xy, is the same as gamma xy divided by 2. Go back here gamma xy divided by 2 epsilon y. Uh, so if we were to find our principal stresses, we, as we've been discussed before, principal stresses for, for our principal strain, we're going to be doing basically exactly the same thing except with strain. So principal strain is epsilon x plus epsilon y divided by 2 plus or minus square root epsilon x minus epsilon y divided by 2 squared. And this is where that engineering shear strain uh, is slightly different. So gamma xy divided by 2 squared. Um, uh, in, a, in a 2D case, we can simplify our uh, strain and stress transformations. Uh, so say we're looking for our new uh, stress, say for x. Our, our new stress simplified would be sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y divide by 2 times the cosine 2 times the angle 
uh, that we're going to be looking at uh, changing here, plus tau xy times sine of two times that angle. So for strain, For a strain, if we were looking for a uh, our new strain, say for x, new strain x would equal epsilon x plus epsilon y divided by 2 plus epsilon x minus epsilon y divided by 2 times cosine 2 theta uh, plus, uh, again, we have gamma x y divided by 2 times sine 2 theta. And I just wanted to reiterate again that epsilon x y equals gamma x y divided by 2. We do the, the same thing just in all these equations. So we have stress, we have strain, they, we, we know all these things about stress and all the things about strain are basically the same. And we, these are called constitutive relations. And what that means is that we're relating stress and strain. So these are some of the main equations that we're going to be using when we're talking in the next part about strain gauge rosettes. But so before we start talking about strain gauge rosettes, there's actually two more equations I want to touch on. They both involve, uh, one is if you have stress and you want to get strain, or if you have strain and you want to get stress. So the first one is if you have stress and you want to get strain. So we want the, the strain, ij. So uh, if we want stress, or if we want strain of ij, well, 1 plus Poisson's ratio divided by Young's modulus times our stress Ij minus Poisson's ratio divided by Young's modulus times stress of 1 plus stress of 2 plus stress of 3, 3 times delta i j. So a couple things to uh, explain here. Um, epsilon i j. So say we're looking for epsilon of x. Well, that's the first one in the matrix. So it'd be epsilon x would be equivalent to epsilon 1, 1. So we would look at the stress of 1, 1. And here we'd have, you know, stress of 1, 1 is x, 2, 2 is y, 3, c, 3 is z. So I, I just wanted to clarify that. Another thing to uh, clarify is delta ij here. You're either going to have delta ij is going to equal 1 or 0. It's going to equal 1 when i equals j. It's going to equal 0 when i does not equal j. So that would be, say we were looking at uh, epsilon of x here. Well, that's 1, 1. i equals j, so delta is 1. Say we were looking, though, for epsilon x, y. Well, it's 1, 2. 1 does not equal 2, so 0. So then this whole part would disappear. Uh, so then say you have a uh, strain and you're looking for stress. Sigma ij equals 2 times mu epsilon ij plus gamma epsilon 1, 1 plus epsilon 2, 2 plus epsilon 3, 3 times delta ij. Uh, again, delta ij is the same thing, 1 or 0. Uh, but mu and gamma are two things we're going to need. These are the Lame constants. So mu 
is equivalent to Young's modulus divided by 2 times 1 plus Poisson's ratio. And gamma is equal to Young's modulus times Poisson's ratio divided by 1 plus Poisson's ratio times 1 minus 2 times Poisson's ratio. Okay, so what is a strain gauge rosette? So a strain gauge rosette is a, uh, a, a strain gauge that we place on a material that we're testing and then we apply a load to this material and our strain gauge rosettes will give us readings uh, of the strain that they're recording and it can tell us, you know, gives us the strains and we can use them to calculate stresses and et cetera, et cetera, using the equations we just talked about. So in this class, the main strain gauge rosette that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about uniaxial strain gauges. So that means that each gauge only measures in one direction. So what, what is a, a typical setup for a strain gauge rosette? Well, there, there could be something like a three element 45 degree uh, planar rosette, which would mean that we'd set them up something like this, where the angles between this one and this one are 45 degrees, and same for this one. Um, and then as we get the material uh, a load, each one will give us... All right. So what do we do? Well, the first thing that we can know right off the bat is since this strain gauge is on the x-axis, the strain in the x-direction is just going to be equal to the strain gauge C. So that's boom. Third of the way there. All right. So what about to get principal uh, strain? We're also going to need epsilon uh, y and gamma xy. All right. So what? What do we? How do we do this? Well. The equation that we're going to use is going to be the epsilon uh, in our direction equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y divided by 2. We talked about this equation uh, a little earlier, so I'll just write it down so that we have it for reference. So that's our equation. So uh, what do we know? Well, first one we can say is that uh, start down here. Epsilon b, which is a value we know, epsilon b is going to be epsilon of theta equaling 60 degrees, because from the positive x to the positive y direction from x to b 60 degrees, so our angle is 60 degrees. So that's going to equal epsilon x plus epsilon y divided by 2 plus epsilon x minus epsilon y divided by 2 cosine 2 theta plus gamma xy divided by 2 sine 2 theta. Okay. Uh, the other thing we can look at is we also know what C is, so we'll say that epsilon C is epsilon uh, theta equal, and this is a strain transformation right here. This is a strain transformation. We, we're going to do another one here. We want to know what A is. Sorry, C is up here. We want to know what A is. Uh, a is going to be 120 degrees from the positive x direction to the positive y direction. All right, so that's 120, uh, and that's going to equal epsilon x plus epsilon y divided by 2 plus epsilon x minus epsilon y divided by 2, blah, 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 blah. Same thing from here. Okay, so we know what this value is here. We know what this value is here. 
we know what our epsilon x is, so we can plug that in here, here, here. So after we plug these in, we, we're going to need one more equation, actually. We're going to need the epsilon uh, c equation. So uh, for epsilon c, which we have, if we were to do a strain transformation, we can just say that a equals 180 degrees because if you if you say that and you plug it in you get the same value so equals blah 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 same thing from up here um, one thing I would especially note is 2 theta so in here it's going to be 120 that's just something that a lot of people uh, often mistake also gamma xy is divided by 2 in this equation so we have these three uh, variables here we have everything else we plug these all in together and we get that epsilon y equals negative 250 times 10 negative 6 and we also get that gamma xy equals 750.56 times 10 to the negative 6 I'll rewrite that a little bigger 750.56 times 10 to the negative 6 so now we need to find what the in-plane principal stresses are. And we, uh, we talked about this equation also earlier in the video, but uh, epsilon for the uh, in-plane principal stress is going to be equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y divided by 2 plus or minus square root of epsilon x minus epsilon y divided by 2 squared plus gamma xy divided by 2 squared. So that's how we're going to solve our... Uh, so we, we have epsilon y, we have epsilon x, uh, so let's plug them all in. So we'll get uh, 250 minus 250 over 2 plus minus 250 plus 250 over 2 squared plus 756.56 divided by 2 squared. Alright, so when we solve that out, we get that our principal strains are positive and negative 451 times 10 to the negative 6. So those are our, our in-plane principal stresses. All right, so then the other question was, after we apply our load, what is the new length of this 10 millimeter strip right here? So we know that the 10 millimeter strip is on the y-axis, and we have the strain in the y-axis. So we're going to remember that uh, epsilon is equal to our, a change in length over the original length. So, in this particular one, this is y, because we're talking about a strip on the y-axis. So, we know that epsilon y equals negative 250 times 10 to the negative 6, and that is equal to our new length minus our old length, which was 10 millimeters, divided by our old length, which is 10 millimeters. So when you multiply this out, you come to find that our new length is equal to 9.9975, and this unit is millimeters. So this bar here will change, uh, it's being compressed actually, and this will be its new length. So that's a little bit on uh, strain transformation and how to use it with strange gauge rosettes. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. Thanks.